this is Lisa at Art Journaling Adventures and we are looking at episode number four of Adventures with Tags. Um, to recap really quickly, first of all, what am I talking about when I mention a tag? This is a tag used in uh, scrapbooking, art journaling, in um, mixed media arts, but you can make cards with them, you can decorate them and put them on packages. Um, I saw someone create an art journal out of tags and fell in love with the idea because, first of all, it's a very small, simple project. I mean, look how tiny that paper is. You can be done this in like 20 minutes um, and have a really pretty project that you're finished with and feel like you've accomplished something and you've taken some time to be creative. And at the time that I found this project, it was really appealing to me because I was just, I couldn't imagine taking on something big, a big art project, a big book, a big page, a big whatever. So that's why I started journaling, uh, art journaling on tags. This is what our end result, this is what we're working towards. And this is a journal that I made out of tags. So you create as many tags as you like. I actually created 17 tags. Each tag has two sides um, and they are decorated with a variety of paper, cloth, buttons, ribbon, all kinds of things. Um, this is some decorative tape. And then each tag also has a place where you can write something. It has, or you can add a quote that inspires you. Let me see if I can find one with a quote that inspires me. Uh, let's see. I know there's one here somewhere. Here we go. Life is a journey and only you hold the key. All right, so that's just a little quote that I finished up. Um, so they can be decorated in a variety of different ways, whatever appeals to you. And then you can make as many as you want. Like I say, I made 17 in this particular journal that I made. And then we will make a cover. Wait, this is really awkward. <laughs> um, we'll make a cover and um, a closure. And then you'll have this beautiful journal full of art that you can also write in, which makes it really kind of special. And it's either a great way for you to have a special journal or obviously you can give it as a gift. So we've talked all about how to create your own tags. And the big focus of this whole ser series of videos is that you can make these with things you have in your house. So you're gonna shop your house for all the products that you need and that way you don't have to go to the store and buy hundreds of dollars of you know fancy things it's really fun to do that like I really love all my fancy things but you literally can do this with stuff you have at home so on episode three we actually created the uh, the first side the front side of a tag using a template like this so we put something big on the bottom and then we put a pattern on the top with a piece of text under it and something small. So this is what it ended up looking like. Here's our big thing on the bottom. Here's a pattern. Here's some text and here's something small. This is a little big for something small, but that's what I chose to put on here. Um, and ultimately this made a pocket that we can then put a piece of paper in that we can journal. So on this next episode, episode four, we are going to first of all talk about how to mix patterns so that you can use more than one pattern at a time. And then we are gonna complete the backside of this card or you can move on and use the, the pattern that I'm gonna show you to create card number two. It's totally up to you what you, what you do. Um, so let's talk a little bit about mixing patterns. All right, so let's get this out of the way. So in the first episode, we talked about having a, a focus piece. This is the focus piece. And a focus piece is going to be a very distinctive picture for my purposes, all right? This is how I describe it. Other people are gonna describe it different ways, but that's how I'm describing it. All right, so a focus picture might be this nice girl sitting in this 
crooks of a mountain or whatever, reading a book, whatever she's doing, okay? A focus picture, here's a nice framed piece out of a gardening magazine. And here, if you like elephants, I love elephants, by the way. Um, if you like elephants, here would be a focal piece that I could use um, that's, again, just out of a magazine. And I could cut this out to fit my tag right here. And this would be the piece, the picture, that I would design the whole rest of the card out of. All right? So in this, in this card that I've already created, I picked this yellow butterfly with this pretty pattern around it and because it was yellow and blue and black I have chosen other yellow blue and black patterns and things to go with it so we're going to continue that theme on the back but first I want to talk about patterns all right so let's talk about patterns when you're using when you're mixing patterns they have to be in scale so I think of it like papa bear mama bear baby bear all right this focus picture is going to be our Papa Bear picture. So it's the biggest. It stands out, it calls our attention, and it's the thing that we work everything else around. So now we need a Mama Bear, which is a middle size print, and a Baby Bear. This is a tiny print. So you can see the scale here. Even though this is numbers, and this is a little teeny tiny uh, plaidish kind of pattern, um, this is this is bigger. These are, this is, these this, these are this big and this is this big so you have a scale here bigger smaller so this is the mama bear and the baby bear all right let's look at some other examples all right here is this came from a calendar this came from a uh, appointment book so this would be our mama bear and this would be our baby bear so this is a very big print and this is a much smaller print Okay, so we're looking at making things moving from bigger to smaller or smaller to bigger, whichever, but you need the contrast of size to mix patterns. One final example. All right, this would be our middle size print, our, our mama bear, and this would be a baby print that would go with it. All right, so even though this plaid kind of thing is tiny in here, the overall feel of this is kind of airy. It's a bigger image where this really comes down to these little tiny, this is almost like a polka dot, okay? So we're looking at varying scales of images when we're talking about mixing patterns. So I hope that helps you understand a little bit about mixing patterns. All right, so what do we need for finishing this project. All right, so I'm going to go down to our uh, materials list from episode three, and that was what we needed to complete this. And you're going to need this, almost the same exact thing. So you're going to need scissors or an X-Acto knife. This is an X-Acto knife, if you're not familiar with that. Um, you can use glue stick or Elmer's glue or a white glue. I use these Tacky glue is pretty common. You might have seen that and you can, you can use that. Um, and these are good for um, other than paper on paper. If you're just using on paper on paper and you're new, you can use a glue stick, you can use Elmer's, you can use any kind of glue you have around the house. Um, paper to paper, it's fine, especially if you're just learning and you're beginning. Don't, don't go out and get anything special. Um, I have started using Yes Paste. Uh, I got it on Amazon. And um, this is wonderful for doing um, gluing paper to paper. And it works a lot better than white glue only because you have the opportunity to stick something and pick it up again where white glue, once you stick it, it's stuck. But, you, you know, just to get started, don't go out and get fancy stuff. Get into this first. Don't spend a whole lot of money and have a lot of fun. The whole point is to have fun. All right, so we've covered the glue. You might need a ruler to make your cuts, a pencil to draw where you want to cut. A hole punch for the top of your tag right here um, we used the one square picture that was our focus picture on the front all right and on the back we are not going to be using a focus picture like this we're actually going to be using two prints instead all right so you're going to use one square of a patterned paper three by three our tag for those of you that haven't seen episodes one through three um, our this tag that we're building is three inches by six inches 
Um, so you'll need a pattern piece that's three by three. And what's not on your original tag materials list is a second patterned piece that's smaller than or bigger than your first pattern piece that you selected. And because we had the scavenger hunt where you were going out and looking for things that all matched, I'm hoping that you have a second pattern piece already collected. If not, you can pause this and look through stuff and see if you can find a second pattern piece. Um, you can use another piece of text paper. That will be optional in this particular project. When I talk about text paper, I'm talking about something with words on it. Okay, so this is pulled, this is just ripped from a book. You can use uh, something from a magazine. You, again, you don't have to, you can type something up yourself and rip it up. Um, it's nothing special. You don't have to go buy this. You can just pull it out of a book or a magazine. Um, and you will definitely need a, 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 an embellishment or two. All right, and then you will definitely need a piece of lined paper. So that's what you're going to need to complete this second side of tag one or to create a whole separate tag. All right, so let's get started with our side two of this tag. So because this front tag is yellow and blue, it's got a little bit of green and some black, I'm going to continue that color theme on the back, especially because this particular card, which I cut from a file folder, already has a yellow back. So I, I will be able to leave some of that exposed and that'll create some interest on the back anyway. All right, so we're going to start with the larger of our patterns. So I'm going to show you some of the patterns that I've pulled out in varying scales. And then you can see what I'm using for my patterned pieces. So I really like this pattern. Um, I, I, I like the circles, especially the way we're going to use it. It's a nice big print for me. So if I'm choosing this as my bigger pattern, now I need to find something smaller that goes with it. So I have this smaller yellow print. This is actually from a tissue box. Love tissue boxes. They have great prints on them. Um, here is a pretty uh, kind of a stripey thing. This actually comes from the front of the image. This was a part of a card. You can see the same image right here. This is just a larger version of it. This was all on a card. So that might work for me. Um, this is part of a magazine picture and it is what I used on the front. I love to repeat patterns front and back so there's a good chance I'm going to use a part of this on the back of my card because I like my fronts and backs to match but that's just me. You don't have to. Um, all right, here's another. This is a very tiny piece of a print that's obviously smaller than this. And then I have this little blue heart. Um, and depending on what I put, so here's an interesting, here's an interesting lesson. If I put this with this, this is a smaller print. The image is tight, the blue lines are tighter together. Um, you can see less of it. <laughs> this is also from a tissue box, by the way. Um, this is a smaller print to this. However, if I put this with this, this has some more space to it, and it becomes the bigger print, and this becomes the smaller print. All right, so I'm not sure which I'm going to use yet, but these are the variety of things that I have collected that match the front of my tag, which, like I say, I like to keep my things all color coordinated, so that's what I'm going to work with. Um, you're welcome to deviate from that if you want to. It's just my, the way I do things. All right, that's the whole thing about our journaling. Like, you can do this however you want. I'm just giving you some patterns and, and kind of soft rules to help you lay things out. So, let's get started. I have the back of my tag right here, and I am going to be creating a um, flap on this instead of a pocket. This had a pocket on the front. On the back, I am actually going to create a folder, so I'm going to add something on an angle, um, and once again, that will be some place that we can leave the, this open and put lined paper in there. All right, and this should come up. I like mine to come up about two thirds. So let's measure two thirds. Is two thirds of six is two inches. So I'm going to start it up here, 
and I like mine to overhang the bottom a little bit. So let's over, let's make it like an inch from the bottom. So I've marked an inch, and I've marked uh, four inches from the bottom, and that is where I'm going to glue like that. That's where I'm going to glue my page. Now I have some choices here because of the way the print in my pattern here. I want this particular circle to kind of be the, the focal point of the back of this card so that when I cut it off, I really can see the circle. That's going to get, give me my, my big bang on the back of this. So um, instead of, you can do this two ways. Um, I think it's easier to put, in this instance, put glue on my tag where I want it, and then I can place this on the glue. Uh, another way to do this is to cut this out and glue it on top. But because, I, I'm, because I'm cutting this to fit the tag, I'm going to put the glue on the tag and then trim my paper to fit. All right. So if you know exactly, if, if you know exactly where your, um, what your print is, you can just go ahead and so let's let's talk about that a little bit. Let me grab a piece of paper here because it's very confusing. If I'm not being specific. All right, so let's just say this was what I was going to use. My tag is three. I think this is a little more than three inches wide. So I'm just going to use this. All right, so you're going to take your tag, place it on your print paper. You can draw a line. All right, and we wanted this to be four inches. So here is four inches, and we wanted this to be a half an inch. So here is, and this is approximate. This is not a science. Oops, I did this the wrong way. This is going to be the bottom. I did this backwards. We're going to go four inches from the bottom. All right, so I'm noticing this is not straight, so I gotta start all over again and measure this and make sure that it's straight before I start or otherwise I'm gonna be all wonky here. All right, so let's start our measuring again. So from the bottom, here's the bottom, I want four inches. There we go, that's four inches. And from the bottom over here, I want a half inch, which that's still close enough. And now I'm going to Cut this at an angle. You can use a pencil and scissors. I have an X-Acto knife, so I'm going to use an X-Acto knife to cut it. And this is going to become my pocket. All right. So because this isn't like this piece of paper where I can measure exactly where I want it. Um, I am going to put it on here. There we go. I knew there was a way I wanted this circle. All right, so I want this circle to be the focal point. And I'm going to kind of turn this on the side there. Now I can use my finger, kind of outline where I want this to be. And that'll actually end up being bigger than what I need. I can do that. But I can also just put my glue. This is my white glue that I showed you. You can use the um, tacky glue. And I'm just going to put a little edge of glue. You might want to have a wet paper towel handy. And there's this is not an exact science. All right, we're just going to put a little bit of glue. Come on. Waiting for my glue to come down. So one of the benefits, one of the things I have come to love about art journaling is that it is not an exact science. I don't have to be perfect. I don't have to be fussy. Uh, for most of my life, I did not do any kind of art because I didn't think I was good enough. And over the last two years, I found art journaling and it has just allowed me to play. And that's... Man, that's really what we want, you know? We just want to have fun with it. I'm not I'm not Michelangelo, don't need to be Michelangelo. I just really love being creative. 
All right, so I have put my glue, I might spread this a little bit with my finger just to give me a little better, wider piece here. And now I'm gonna, I've got this little outline where I put my hand, but mostly I know where I want, I want this um, circle here to be really what I see. So I've glued this on, now watch. You're gonna be like, what, what am I doing? How do I know what's next? And I can flip it over and I trim it off where I don't want it. And that, so that's how I'm gonna do this. So that was two different ways to do the same thing, all right? So in this instance, I wasn't really quite sure how to cut my paper. So instead, I glued it on where I knew I wanted it, and then I'm cutting the paper off. And you can do this cutting with scissors, you can do it with the um, X-Acto knife, whatever you feel most comfortable with. And there I have my pocket. So you might have cut it out of something like this and had this piece, and then you're gonna glue around the edges and put it on. I glued first and then put it on and trimmed it, all right? So that's gonna become our pocket, and I can tell I didn't trim it quite tight enough, so let's go back and just trim that up nice and tight so it really aligns with the cardboard of my tag. Oops. A little bit gluey, a little bit gluey, Louie. That's stuck to my scissors. No biggie. I used a uh, magazine. This is a magazine picture, and because I'm using it as a pocket, I actually glued it to something else to make it a little stiffer. So you can do that if you like. You don't have to. I just wanted to make it a little, give it a little more body. All right. So when we look at our template for tonight. This is our pattern. So we've put our first pattern on. Now we're gonna look at that smaller pattern. So we had a mama bear um, and a baby bear. So this is our mama bear pattern. These separated. All right. So now we need the smaller pattern, all right? And I had kind of decided that I wanted to reuse the black spots. I like the spots and the spots together, so that works really well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and you can tear this, you can cut it. One more beautiful benefit of art journaling is you don't have to be a good cutter. You can do all of this just by tearing. I'm just tearing it off. It doesn't have to be straight not following any lines, just making sure I'm getting those beautiful polka dots because that's what I want to see. And I kind of like the fact that it's hanging down this way, a little bit long here. It's not perfectly rectangular. And we're going to put this up in the corner, not overlapping our hole that we cut uh, to thread our um, ring through to hang it. So that's going to be our second pattern. And now I'm still left with what is my little embellishment. And I might decide that I don't like this. I might decide that I'm gonna do something else. We'll have to see. I kind of like this heart with it. But I don't know that I like the heart with the black. Let me see what else I can use. I know I had something else here that I felt like matched. Oh no, like that better. All right, so here's my small, this is, ends up being my really small print, and this actually ends up being a uh, third small print. This is my small. All right, so I'm using, this as my pattern. Again, this was a tissue box. Um, when I use tissue boxes, I try to, because um, they're so thick, I try to rip a little bit of the back off. I, I have, pretty good fine motor skills so if you don't don't bother trying this because you might make a mess of it and then you'll be frustrated with me but I try to take some of the layers off because it's just so thick that it gets kind of bulky all right there we go okay so here's my second pattern all right, and I kind of would like, like, I would like that a little longer. 
so I think I'm going to rip it a little more so I can use the other side. And this should probably take up the top third. So we so we measured from two thirds from the bottom up. That's where we started this. This should probably go almost down to one third. Okay, so here's a third. This small pattern piece is coming down to a third. So if you need kind of a rule of thumb, we're going to use that as our rule of thumb. All right, so that I'll glue on here. And the final last thing I'm going to do is put something, this is my small, all right, my little thing. So in the past episodes, we have talked about smalls. Smalls are stamps. Here's a little fuzzy thing. I don't even know what this is. Um, it might be uh, a stamp. This says, thank you. That's really pretty. I could use that on there, actually. That's lovely. Um, it's anything that is a really, here's another green stamp. That would be nice on here. Um, it's just something, it's something that's small. Here's a bird I cut out. It doesn't go on here, but you could put something like that on here. So it's just something that's kind of distinctive, but small. It could be a word. So I might use, this is too big, but I might use a word across there. Uh, here's, I like this word on here. I like the word mindful on here because the other side of this talks about kind of mindfulness. So I could use that. So it's just something that's smaller that you can um, stick on top of this. So we're layering things, all right? So we have our, our middle-sized print um, or our big print and our small print, okay? And all of these go with the stuff on the front, all right? So, and then the final thing is this little small piece. So what's your, what is your small gonna be, all right? And I, I'm having trouble deciding. I might use the word too. So I think I'm gonna go with the heart. So here I have my pattern, which is going here. I have my pattern number two, which is my smaller size or larger size pattern here. And then a little small thing here, an embellishment here, which is gonna be a stamp, uh, a picture of an animal, a piece of fruit. It could be a word, it could be a leaf. It just is is an, a, a, an individual thing that is, um, very, again, something distinct, generally distinctive. I'm trying to come up with some other sh pictures to show you. Here's a little flower that I could use on there. It doesn't go. Um, so it's just going to be something that it could be a circle that has a print in it. It could be, here's a, um, here's a picture I cut out of a magazine. I could cut this butterfly out. I wouldn't use all the rest of it, just the butterfly. I could cut the butterfly out and put it on there. So it's something smaller. Um, in this instance, I, I prefer something that has some shape to it rather than something square, but that's just me. So it's just something that is smaller, somewhat distinctive, that matches the other papers and um, that stands out, all right? So I like the idea of this heart, so I think I'm going to go with the heart. So let's go ahead and glue this on now that I know where I'm putting everything. I tend not to glue things on until I've played with it a little bit. And I can see, do like for example, I had this black on, but I really didn't like the black. I really wanted to use the heart, so I had to find something else besides this black. If I glued it down, then I'd have to use the black. So I, I try to get everything kind of laid out first. And then once I see it, then I say, okay, I like that. Now I can glue it down. So I'm just gonna glue this all down using my white glue. And when you're gluing, you wanna make sure that you really get to the edge, especially if you've torn your paper like I did. You wanna make sure that you get that glue all the way to the edge because, um, you know, this tag, you're, if you're using it like a journal, you're gonna be turning the pages a lot. You're gonna be turning your tags and opening and closing it. So you really wanna make sure that the edges are stuck down because otherwise, they'll come unstuck and they'll get torn and that would be sad because you did so much nice work on it. All right, so remember we were talking about coming down one third, which marks here, coming down about a third and um, less than halfway. So your, your hole is halfway, so we're putting it less than halfway and a third of the way down. So I'm gluing that on, that's all ready. And as you can see, it's overhanging. I don't care because I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna cut it off. And there we go. 
So we've got that little piece on. And now I've got my heart. And I'm gonna attach my heart here. And I really like it. Again, this was from a tissue box. So, so far there is nothing on this. I did buy the, the, um, the base of my tag is made from a file folder. So I did end up buying that. But I, I bought a bunch of them when they were on really clearance priced. Um, but if you have file folders around the house, you don't have to buy a file folder. What I like about these file folders is they're a really good thick. You want a really good stiff cardboard for your tags because they're going to get a lot of wear. They're going to get a lot of use. You're going to be turning them over a lot. And if it's soft and floppy, then it'll just wear out. And this you're going to kind of over, just cover up this bottom corner. All right. There's not really a science to it. All right. All right. Now, I would like, were I doing this on my own, I would like something else on here. I would like a little bit of pattern here. I want something more on this. So I might um, find, I like the using the black from the front, because remember my front had this pretty black polka dot and these black little checkered things. Um, so I might even cut this off. So if you have a little strip of something from the front or a little piece of something, you can just cut a little piece of that off. This is where an X-Acto knife comes in really handy. I just feel like I want an edge to that angular corner. But this is totally an embellishment thing. This is not a have to. I just never know when to stop. <laughs> I <laughs> just keep adding stuff. I love adding stuff. Building the layers. That's what makes it pretty. Oh, yes. So what do you think? That's what it looks like without. And that's what it looks like with. And I think it looks much better with. And I think because I've used the blue up here, I really would like something blue underneath of there. So you know what I'm going to do? All right. So the next thing we're going to, we're going to put some lined paper in here. This is the lined paper that I'm going to use, and it's blue, obviously. And I think I'm going to take just a little piece of this blue and kind of run it under the edge here somewhere, just a little tiny bit of it. So I'm just going to cut a piece of this off. I'm not even going to measure it because art journaling is not fussy. I'm just not going to be fussy about this, all right? And I'm just going to stick this under here a little bit just because I want to, not because there's any other, no other reason other than I want to. I just want to see that blue on there. Yeah, I like that. I wish the blue had a pattern, but you know what? I am not gonna, I'm not gonna worry about it. All right, so because I want this on here, I'm gonna just take the moment to put a little extra glue on here and glue on this stripe. Wish I had a black and white polka dot. I really would like that on there, but a uh, better black and white stripe. But this is what I have. This is what I'm going with. So I'm gluing this right on the edge, just, just for decoration. This is strictly an extra thing. And because this is, this paper is really thin, so I'm going to use a glue stick instead of using the wet glue, because I think it's going to get too floppy if I use wet glue. So I'm just going to use a glue stick, and I'm just going to stick this part way down. Not all the way, just part way, just a little bit. Just so we can say, oh yeah, there's glue in the top and glue in the bottom. All righty, and then I'm going to turn it over and trim off my extras. Okie dokie. All right. So the last thing you can do, other than the paper, which we'll get to, is you might, um, I love putting inspirational things, uh, phrases like note to self. Um, I, I love putting words. I love putting inspirational things on my um, cards, on my artwork, which is one of the reasons, kind of what makes it art journaling and not just 
mixed media art. Um, and so sometimes I'll print something off, I'll find a quote and I'll type it up in a pretty font and print it off and put it on there or I'll find words in magazines. And so like I said, I kind of like this um, mindful word that was on the front. I don't like the black here, the letters that were left from before. So I'm going to kind of tear those off. Oops, tore off my eye from the mindful. Should have been more mindful while I was ripping that off. And this is, to me, it's a little bit too big. So I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller. Mindful. That's what I want, just like that. All right, once again, since it's kind of flimsy, I'm just gonna go ahead and use glue stick glue. I find glue stick glue doesn't really hold as well. Um, so I, I, it, it would be my last recommendation, but, um, but to make it easier to show you and faster, and because it's easier to handle a lot of times, it's a little easier than white glue can be a little hard to deal with sometimes. So if you're new to this, glue stick is just fine. All right, so the last thing we're going to do, I'm going to glue on my table. The last thing we're going to do, because we want to be able to journal in this tag journal, is find a piece of paper. I, <laughs> I love paper, so I have lots of journal with different color papers, and I look for different color pads and papers. I happen to have this pretty blue paper. So this is what I'm going to use because I think it's going to be pretty. Um, and just to make it a little different, Instead of just putting it in there, which I can do, um, I like to make things a little different. So I'm going to fan fold this a little bit. So I'm just going to fold it arbitrarily, kind of like a fan. I am not going to be fussy about this. All right, so I just folded it, folded it over, folded it over, folded it over. But when I put it in my pocket, it looks really cool. All right, and I think it's a little bit too big because it's covering my heart. So I think I'm going to cut some of the top off. And because I can, I'm going to cut it maybe a little bit rounded. I might have to cut off some of my paper. I think this still might be too tall. Yep, it's still covering too much. So I'm just going to go for it and cut the bottom off. Oh yeah, that's way better. I love that. And I love that the, the pattern, because I used striped paper, it gave me just one more pattern. I have another pattern on there. That's just fun. I like that a lot. And so there you have your tag number two. So this can either be a separate tag that you created, or it can be a whole complete front and back of a tag, all done. And as you can see, it's pretty. It's all color coordinated. And... Um, you're ready to move on to the next tag. So I hope you will uh, join me for our adventures with tags number five. Take number four off because we're done with number four. Join me for number five um, and we'll create another, I'll give you another template for uh, creating a tag that's even different. This one will have a moving part. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this art adventure on tags. I hope you will tune in again. If you want to tune in again, we are going to be using the same exact materials list over and over and over again. So just keep refilling this list. You want something that is a focus um, picture. You want some pattern pictures. You want a picture with some text and you want some embellishment and some lined papers. And as long as you have those things and they all match, keep your rules in mind about the mama bear, papa bear, baby bear, your bigger thing and your smaller thing together, as long as they match and they have some different differing of scale to them, you'll be all ready for the next tag project. For now, this is Lisa from Art Journaling Adventures and just saying thanks for creating with me. Have a great day.